Uh, you know, I love having Raphael on because he, you know, we have people that come on and they're sound bite wonks. You know, they're great at having a few sound bites. And then, you know, increasingly now I see, um, you know, when I have guests in the studio and they come in with like, you know, seven pages of papers and they got them laid out all over the desk. And I'm like, you know, we're having you on because you're an expert. Okay. I don't think you need all those papers and notes and everything else. I mean, if you do, then maybe you don't have a great grasp on the subject matter we're talking about, okay? And um, some people, they just have grasp, but they're scared. Um, when I first started going on television, I wanted to be natural and be myself, but I also knew that I had to talk in, you know, condensed sound bites. So I would have a small piece of paper um, with one, two, three, four bullet points on it, okay? And those bullet points, I already knew my thought process and how I wanted to put that out there. Raphael's one of these guys where he doesn't need to read off a piece of paper. He's in the trenches. He rolls up his sleeve. He does the policy research. He gets in there. He digs down. He knows how to dip into different resources and information buckets and stuff. And, uh, Guys like Raphael, you know, you may not particularly agree perfectly with him, um, but the one thing you know for sure is you're getting straight dope. You're not getting opinion. You're not getting editorializing. That's up to me to ed editorialize. But with him, he's giving you the straight dope right from where it's coming from. And this guy is like a hawk watching all these different sectors of public policy related to criminal justice and criminal justice reform. Um, and it's so sick that at this time when we're locked up in our house, we're locked up. Right now we're locked up. Okay, Attorney General William Barr said yesterday that some states' orders are very, very close to home imprisonment. Okay? So think about this. Hardworking, non-offending human citizens are locked in their house but law-breaking, convicted felons are being let out of jail. The world is upside down. Yesterday, oil was upside down. Uh, Monday, oil was upside down in that um, there's such a lack of demand and you can't just stop supply that um, companies were offering people, forget about buying a barrel of crude oil, they were offering to pay you if you would take one off their hands because their storage facilities are full. And it's going to cost you some money to get a truck or, or a tanker or something there to get it and put it somewhere else and hold it. Um, craziness. Oil's oil, not gas. People messaged me yesterday saying, if oil's our, our crude oil is the main ingredient in gasoline, but... You need to get crude oil to a refinery and then refine it to gasoline to put it in a car, and that still costs money. So um, the refinery is, is the issue. They don't pull gasoline out of the earth. Um, they pull out crude oil and light sweet crude and West Texas intermediary crude, and you got the summer blend and the winter blend, and there's all kinds of different things. But crude oil... And some of this oil that was going at these, you know, negative prices was South American crude, which is a thicker, deeper, sludgier type of oil from what I understand. I'm being told from experts that I'm talking to. So it actually costs more to refine. So don't get out there and start thinking you're some kind of oil speculator. Um, you got Russia and OPEC in, you know, a battle in a bunch of ways. Um, we have no consumption. One of the bigger consumers in the world of, of fuel is uh, airlines. They're pretty much grounded. While they can fly, no one wants to fly on them. Um, and if you leave in one of the biggest hubs in the world, New York City, wherever you go, they want to lock you up for a couple hours, a uh, couple of weeks. So flights are down, consumption's down, airlines are down. And, you know, airlines, uh, they're not using gas. I'm using like probably 20% 
of my usual usage, not even, probably 10%. I probably use a tank and a half of gas a week going back and forth to New York City every day to the studio to now I'm using like a quarter of a tank a month. So you figure I'm, I'm using, you know, one and a half, one and a half, three, three. Figure I'm using six tanks a week, six tanks of gas a month. Um, one and a half, one and a half, three. Twelve tanks of gas a month. It's probably about right. Forty bucks times twelve. About five hundred a month in gas. Five, six hundred a month in gas. Um, and now I'm using, you know, forty bucks in a month. So forty in a month. Um versus 600 in a month, um, that's, uh, you know, 1,500, 100, that's a 1,500% reduction in my use. So now the airlines, at least I'm still driving the shop and stop. The airlines, a lot of the flights are being canceled. They're not even running them. So I don't even know what they're at. They're probably closer to zero than anything else on their consumption numbers.